Hey there teachers, welcome to Miss Estric Teach and Tell, the podcast where every week I dive into all the tips and tricks that make teaching life so much easier. Whether you're a veteran educator, an early career teacher, learning the ropes or balancing the classroom with being a busy parent, this will help you streamline your workload and bring a bit more balance to your life. You bring the coffee and I'll bring the teach and tell. I used to dread having revision lessons observed because they felt static. You had students just working independently independently and I couldn't figure out how to show progression. But then I took on the challenge of making revision lessons as engaging and impactful as any other lesson and it worked. Today I'm sharing how to make your revision lessons dynamic, interactive and full of progression. Hi teachers and welcome back to Miss Estric Teach and Tell where we tackle all things teaching to make your life easier, more effective and more enjoyable. I'm Miss Estrick, a former head of department, now an education entrepreneur, and I'm here to help you thrive in your teaching journey. Now, today's episode is for anyone who is stuck when planning revision lessons. And I've deliberately planned it for this new year episode because lots of students probably have revision lessons, whether that's year 11s for mocks or year 12s for mocks or year 13 for mocks. So I thought this might be a helpful helpful time of year to have it for you. Now maybe you've heard that revision lessons are harder to plan or even less suited for observation lessons because it is tough to show student progression because they've already learned all the theory. Or maybe you've run a revision lesson where students worked silently and felt it was just a bit flat. Well I'm here to tell you revision lessons don't have to be that way and I used to think they did and it would be impossible to make them exciting, engaging and to show significant progression. But I've been working on this for the last few years when I was teaching and I've come up with a way that you can make them as engaging and interactive as any other lesson and showing really clear and significant progression. And in fact, I had this light bulb moment when I was observed teaching a revision lesson on biological molecules for A-level biology. And it became my go-to lesson for demonstrating differentiation and also for lesson observations and for revision. So this one lesson I have used multiple times in multiple observations observation lessons for PhD students or students who are learning A-level for the first time and also just for my own performance management. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today, the thought process behind planning this revision lesson so you can take away those key ideas and implement it yourself. Oh and just to let you know, my free online CPD sessions are now live to sign up to. So I am running a free online CPD session in January, February and March and all three are for free. So I'm going to link it in the show notes, but just to give you a bit of an idea, the first one is going to be Tuesday the 21st of January, all about ChatGPT. The second one is Tuesday the 4th of February, and this is about streamlining your workload, lots of different strategies to gain back more time as a teacher. And then the final one, Tuesday the 4th of March, is really specific for A-level biology. This is how to teach the AQA biology essay. So those are the three free CPD events I'm running in the first quarter of this year. If you want to come along, sign up in the link in the show notes. Okay, quick coffee catch up and I am actually on water today, a quick water catch up for me today. Now to let you know how my week has been, this is going to sound really bizarre to you because this episode is going live at the start of January. It's actually early December now. I just batched filmed a load of the episode so I didn't have to work over Christmas. So when I tell you what I've been doing this week, it's gonna sound odd, but bear in mind, it was early December. So this week I, well that last weekend actually, I went to Luxembourg to the Christmas markets for a child free weekend with my partner and it was absolutely amazing. So that was such a good opportunity to start to feel Christmassy, try out lots of different mulled wine and food stores. And then the weekend just gone, I actually went with 20 of my friends 10 adults, 10 children under eight. It's all my university friends. Every year we do a Christmas day and we all sleep over at one of my friend's houses. So yeah, that was great fun. Intense, chaotic and incredibly loud. But that's how my week's been the last couple of weeks. It's been really, really fun, Christmassy and lots of time for enjoying my social life and lots of time for Christmas vibes. But I know you're now in January, so this probably isn't going to sound very relevant. Anyway, let's move on to revision lessons and some of the problems with the traditional or old fashioned style revision lessons. Now, throughout my teaching career, I was teaching for 15 years. 
I always avoided revision lessons for my lesson observations for my performance management because I didn't feel like they would be a fair showcase of my teaching skills because part of what I want to demonstrate in an observation lesson is my ability to explain challenging concepts and to demonstrate my subject knowledge in A-level biology as well as showing that students are making significant progress. And I really struggled to find a way or think it was even possible, it's all to do with my mindset really, to think it was possible to demonstrate all of that within a revision lesson because they've already been taught and learned all the content. That means I'm not demonstrating my ability to show my subject knowledge and show how well I can explain the concept for them to learn. And also how am I gonna show progress when they've already learned it all? So I used to do revision lessons that were more a mix of independent work. So maybe they were doing exam questions in silence or exam questions in pairs or revision activities but quite a lot of it was independently self-led and then we would mark it and get feedback together as a class rather than me at the front guiding and doing different things that I felt I would want to demonstrate in an observation lesson. But one year I couldn't avoid it. So I had my head teacher as my line manager for one year and she was going to observe me teach. She really wanted to see me teach A-level because I taught a lot of it. She'd heard good things. So she's like, right, I want to see you teach an A-level lesson. She didn't enforce it on me. I was happy for her to see an A-level lesson. But the time of year that that fell was revision because they just learned a topic and they were starting to revise for some exam. So I thought I could ask for a different time so it doesn't hit this revision lesson. So I'm not going to do that because I feel like that might make me sound a bit incompetent. Whether it does or doesn't, that's how I felt. And then I thought, well, I could just rearrange the lessons. I was like, oh no, because then I'm affecting the student's lesson order for my own personal gain. So I was like, I'm not going to do that. So I decided I'm not going to rearrange or ask for a different time. I'm just going to challenge myself to create a revision lesson that would be engaging, interactive, demonstrate clear progression of the students and showcase my subject knowledge as well. And I am so happy that I did challenge myself to do this because to date, this is my favorite ever lesson to teach. And I recycled this over and over and over for all of my year 12 classes. I even did my year 13, I made a GCSE version. So that's what I'm gonna be talking you through today. Okay, so how to plan an outstanding revision lesson. Step one, we know that in a revision lesson, they have learned all the theory. They might not remember it all, they might not understand it all, but they have been taught it all at some point. So revision lessons are a perfect opportunity to use active recall and to build on what they understand and what they do or don't remember. So for my lesson on biological molecules, my starter was exactly that. I wanted to gauge how much they could remember really, really quickly, but in an interactive and engaging way. So I am obsessed with mini whiteboards. If you have bought my AQA A-level biology lessons you would have seen that mini whiteboards feature basically every lesson and that's what I was known for at my school by my students mini whiteboards were always out you use them throughout the lesson and what I actually did at the start of this revision lesson was I asked students to list all the biological molecules they can think of so it was a really quick starter, getting them engaged immediately. They could easily start to just list what they could and couldn't remember, which was helpful for me to see as well. And then I also put on a bit of an extension for the students who could do that no problem. I then wanted to see, could they draw the biological molecules? So that's what I gave them as a quick five minute starter. And then after that, I built on it with more active recall, but an activity that enabled me to showcase my subject knowledge, particularly my mark scheme specific knowledge and understanding of that level of depth of the specification, whilst also really being able to stretch and challenge students, support the ones that needed support and demonstrate progression. So step two, I used card sorts to deepen student understanding. So I remembered CPD training that I'd had several years ago where I was taught one strategy to really show differentiation and progression is to pick a simple card sort, but use those same cards in multiple ways and build the level of challenge on how you use the cards 
cards to push students thinking. So I created a pack of cards and the cards were really basic. Just one card had one biological molecule on it and I had a range of the different biological molecules. I also got the students to work in pairs throughout this lesson because at my school students were quite often afraid to look like they might be failing and they wouldn't volunteer answers as readily because of that. So I thought if I put them as pairs, it might take away that accountability or fear of failure and make it a bit more fun and like a quiz almost. So I put them in pairs. That was to reduce that pressure of feeling wrong and encourage discussions as well while making it more fun. So here's how I used the cards. First, I had them sort the biological molecules into types of molecules. So if you're a biology teacher, this will probably make a lot of sense to you. If you're not, you probably think, I've no idea, but you can apply this to what might work for your subject. So whether it's a language and it's grouping according to whether it's, well, I don't know now, past tense, present tense or verbs, whatever it might be. And what we had was carbohydrates proteins, lipids, they had to sort them into the, which type of molecule they were. So that was the base level of the activity. Then I upped the level of challenge and said, using these same cards, you now need to sort them according to which chemical bonds that each biological molecule contains. And then we upped it again to what's the function or which chemical reactions are they involved in? So it was the same pack of cards, meaning very quick and easy for me to set this up. But that whole activity took at least half an hour building each time. So I was showing progression through the lesson and because they were doing this in pairs and it was really straightforward for them to understand what they needed to do, it gave me the opportunity for most of the lesson to circulate and talk to the pairs. So the students that I knew were weaker and might need support, I could go to them first and predict in advance what they might struggle with, questions to ask them, prompts to give them to support those students. And then the students that I thought would probably finish a bit quicker, I'd go to them and ask them more challenging questions and question their thought process behind why have you put it in this group? Can you name this group? And just building on that level of challenge. So in that way, it was differentiated. I was showing progression and it was engaging and interactive and really testing what they could remember and helping them to think about these biological molecules more holistically as well. Now, the next thing that I did with the same pack of cards was a diamond nine activity. So with those same biological molecules, I then asked students to rank them from the most important biological molecule for survival down to the least. And there is of course no correct answer to this. All biological molecules are essential, but the point of it was to spark debate between the pairs and getting them to really think deeply about what is the function of all of those biological molecules. And this then got them debating. It got a lot more energy in the lesson again. And I went around playing devil's advocate, asking them what they put at the bottom and then asking them what the role of that molecule was. And oh my God, well, if they don't have that, it sounds like they're going to die. If they don't have cell membranes, how on earth have you put that at the bottom? But the whole point was, and I told them this at the start and again at the end, there isn't actually a correct answer. I want you to really have a deep understanding of the functions and be able to justify the importance because that is you applying your knowledge and also they need that for the essay skills. So again, you may not teach biology, but you can use that sort of concept, whichever grouping you did to start with, is there a way to then have it grouped according to importance? So if it was English literature, could you maybe have a range of characters and they had to be grouped for different reasons? And then at the end, can you rank them according to which character was the most important for a particular plot or theme throughout the book? Not an English teacher, so I'm not certain if that could work, but that's the sort of thing. You can have a look at how might this apply well for your subject if you don't teach biology biology. Now, after we've done all of those activities to really test, can they remember the information? Do they understand it? Can they apply this? I then wanted to move on to exam technique and to improve exam skills, instead of just giving them exam questions, which I've done in the past, and there is a time and place for that. Absolutely. I decided instead to give the students some jumbled up sentences, which were two exam answers jumbled together. So step one in their pairs, they had to sort them in into which sentences would make the particular answers. And then I asked them to come up with what would be the exam question. And 
part of that was for them to, again, think about exams from a different point of view and test their understanding. But it was also exam technique because I really wanted them to focus on picking the correct command word to see do they understand command words. So when they had to come up with those two different questions, I asked them to consider carefully what command word is it going to be describe, explain, evaluate, and think carefully which key terms in those answers have led you to come up with that question title. And those were the sorts of things I questioned them on as well as I was going round. Now the next part of the revision lesson was now drawing it to a close, trying to be more fun and competitive and bring that energy back up again after doing the exam questions. So we ended with a Tarsia quiz, which if you haven't heard of Tarsia, it's a free way to make card sorts online. I'll link it in the show notes where you basically type in a question and an answer, but the free program creates a card sort out of it where on one side of a card, you have a question and then on a different card, you have the answer. You have to match them up. But when you do that for all of your cards, it makes a particular particular shape. Quite often this is used in maths, but I find it works well for biology as well, revision lessons, as long as it's a short enough question and answer to fit on the card. And if you see my ChatGPT episode, ChatGPT is great for this. I use ChatGPT. I said, here's the topic, here are the spec points. I want it to be a really short question and answer and I need 20 of them. And ChatGPT made it for me very, very quickly. I checked it and edited some of it, but it was a great way to make this activity really quickly. Now I've always tried to add a bit of competition energy to the lesson. So I told my groups that the first three groups to complete this would be the winners and they would win stickers. Now I've always used stickers and yes, they are year 13s or even with year 11s and 12s. And it might sound like that'd be something you do for primary school, but it's tongue in cheek and they love it. I get all sorts of stickers, things like the 3D dinosaur stickers or biology themed stickers. And I'll actually link below some of the stickers that I've used in the past that are a great deal. You get loads of them and the students love it and they get really competitive throughout the whole year of who can get the most stickers throughout the entire year. So I gave that as a prize. Whichever teams were the first three to win would win some stickers. So that was the fun, engaging way that I ended it with a competitive edge and it wrapped up the lesson on a high note while reinforcing the knowledge, exam style technique, and checking that they've understood the information. And then the final part was the plenary, which also fed into the homework where we talked about smart targets. So I asked them to reflect on this lesson and think which bits of the theory could they remember really easily and accurately which did they struggle to remember or maybe when we were doing the card sorts they grouped into the wrong chemical bond for example and they hadn't fully remembered it correctly and I said from that we're going to create a smart target did a reminder on what smart targets are and that was their homework to complete for the next week or it might have been two weeks until they had their test so this gave them a clear actionable takeaway from the lesson of how they can continue to improve after the lesson as well leading up to the test so that is the template of what I did did for my favorite ever lesson, which happened to be a revision lesson, which my head teacher, when she observed it, said she absolutely loved it and thought it was a differentiation masterclass. And that's why I then had different teachers observe me teach it so that they could see ways that you can make revision lessons just as engaging and showing progression as any other type of lesson. So the quick win of the week this week is I challenge you to go and create one card sort, but use it in multiple ways. And this can be so quick and easy to make. Like I said, my one was a simple pack of cards that took a maximum of 10 minutes to create and print, yet it used up 30 minutes at least of lesson time. And I used it over and over. And my head teacher called it a differentiation masterclass. And it worked because it pushed the students to think about the same items in different ways. So engage them deeply, getting them to apply their knowledge, multiple different ways to think about something to see it holistically. Following on from that is our resource roundup and this week's resource roundup is my Tarsia quiz template. So that Tarsia quiz that I was talking about, the one that I made for biological molecules, I've linked it down below in the show notes so you can have it for free. The one that I've made and used in the lessons, it's there in the show notes. Hopefully you're a biology teacher, this is useful for you. If it's not, download it, have a little look and then you can create your own version for your subject as well. Now link to that, that is my resource roundup freebie but I do actually have the revision biological molecules revision lesson that I've been talking about in this whole episode linked below. So you can purchase that as well. This lesson with all of the resources, the PowerPoint slides, the instructions, all of the card sorts as well. So if you do want to get your hands on that, that is linked in the show notes. 
So that is it for today's episode. I hope these ideas inspire you to rethink your mindset around revision lessons and make them just as dynamic and impactful as any other lesson. And if you have found this episode helpful, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button or follow and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or a comment on YouTube because it really does help to have my podcast reach more teachers so I can help as many of you as possible. So that's it. I'll see you next week. You bring the coffee and I'll bring the teach and tell.